Okay, Ronell, hello. Thank you so much for coming out tonight, and thank you to the Industrial Labor Relations School for hosting us tonight. Ooh. Cheers, everybody. I would like to thank the uh, School of Industrial Labor Relations, like I said, for uh, allowing us to come here, uh, silence campus conservative voices, and uh, also adjudicate uh, our own internal labor, our own internal labor disputes on the podcast itself, such as the question of how many times is Virgil allowed to go to the bathroom whenever I want. <laughs> I would say I've my opening position in this negotiation is that we treat you like a uh, fulfill someone working at an Amazon fulfillment center. You get 30 seconds to do your business. That's not enough time. That's not you. You have to. There's a lot of things you do in there. You've got to. You, you know, look at yourself in the mirror. Wash your hands if you feel like it. Uh, sometimes I just want to be alone. ILR school. Your work is cut out for you. We'll be negotiating all night. Uh, in case you don't know already, this uh, event here at Cornell marks the triumphant return of Mr. Virgil Texas, like Wiley Odysseus, home again to Ithaca, only to find all of you suitors here waiting to defile his beloved alma mater. He will string a bow and shoot an arrow through all of you, provided you line up precisely in, like, sort of in a straight line. I think we should, I think we should be allowed to uh, make that happen. Uh, thank you guys all for coming out tonight. Um, question, though. Uh, did anyone, I know you're here to see us tonight, but did anyone here uh, see Ross Douthat last night? Crickets. Oh, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he was here? Because it did not seem well publicized, this event. I Like I said, I think he was the youngest person in that room. You had a, a, a world-famous New York Times columnist speak at your university last night, and none of you showed up? I'm a little worried about their commitment to bourgeois values of thrift and diligence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were here last night, and um, we would have gone, except um, we didn't want to. Yes. I mean, we thought that shit would be boring and we uh, lame as fuck. We did not want to. So, uh, so I, I guess you didn't know this. Boss Ross visited the Hill last night to give a speech on meritocracy. Uh, it's from the from the event. Uh, it says here, our contemporary power structure claims to be based on merit and aims for diversity, but it has lost the sense of duty and responsibility that traditional aristocracy represented, says author and political essayist Ross Douthat. In meritocracy and public good, who wins, who loses? Douthat explores what the costs of this structure are to the common good. Sponsored by the program on the freedom and free societies is the program on freedom and free societies. The talk will be held Thursday, April 25th at the Hollis E. Cornell Auditorium in Goldwyn Smith Hall. Woo! Uh, yeah, woo! Got some Goldwyn Smith fans out here? Great hall. As a strong conservative commenter on America Today, Ross Douthat offers lucid, penetrating thought and an irresistible narrative uh, okay. ability. He is right. one of the most perceptive thinkers, one of the most perceptive writers, and I'm sure Douthat's talk will engage an audience across the political spectrum, but not across an age spectrum no, or, no. Or, or any spectrum of people who no. attend. Certainly Cornell. not the color spectrum. I went on the Sun website today trying to see if, you know, there's a, a story about this event because he is, you know, he's a New York Times columnist, and that's the kind of thing Lamos would go see, irrespective of how you feel about the person. And as I remember from my time at Cornell, yeah, there's a lot of Lamos, definitely, no question. Uh, we, of course, there was, but there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing on the Sun website or anywhere on Twitter about this of, of allegedly transpiring event. We came in too late to actually catch Ross's speech, but of course we wanted to go to the after party. Uh, so, I, so we looked up who actually brought Ross to Ithaca, and like Will said, it wasn't the Campus Republicans or the Wonk Club or whatever. It was the Program on Freedom and Free Societies, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a student club at all. It is some sort of association of middle-aged war dad professors. <laughs> uh, and if you go on the website, some of their recent guests include Victor Davis Hanson, who a talk called Populist Revolt, Everything Old is New Again, and Jonah Goldberg, friend of the show, giving a talk called Suicide of the West. Uh, to prevent the suicide of the West, we, they should put up some of those nets. Am I right? <laughs> That's, uh, 
Yeah, that's some uh, yeah. That's some pandering to I the, love uh, the home suicide crowd. Material. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, it's really that that joke only works here in Shenzhen. <laughs> <laughs> There are pictures on the website of the past events, and, and the one with a good crowd shot had like fewer than two dozen old men there for what is ostensibly an event for the whole community. <laughs> so we, uh, we missed Ross's presentation, uh, but we did like the, the, the silver lining to that cloud of missing uh, an opportunity to see Roth do that, expound on meritocracy in a lecture. Uh, we discovered the, uh, the professor who uh, put this on, a guy named... Uh, the director of the Freedom. The director of the Freedom and Free Society. His name is uh, Professor Barry Strauss, and he is the Bryce and Edith M. Uh, Bomar Professor in Humanistic Studies Boner in the professor. Department... What is that? Boner Professor. The Boner <laughs> Professor in the Department of... Has anyone, has anyone taken a class yeah. with Barry Strauss? Professor Barry Strauss. Here we go. There we go. All right. Wow, got a question. Uh, it's, was, it an, was it an easy A? Because he be seems like a, a dummy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. <laughs> we spent a long time last night out in the commons uh, just drinking and being like, where's Ross? Where's Ross? Expecting him to like walk by or something so we could harass him. Uh, and we just ended up going on this rabbit hole about, you know, uh, history and war dad professor Barry Strauss. The, 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 the best way I can describe Barry Strauss is like a, a real life version of Mark Corrigan from Peep Show. Yeah. In that he's like the kind of guy, yeah. <laughs> He's the kind of guy that uh, looks at history, or you know, uh, the, the great men and great leaders of history, from you know Tutankhamen to Alexander the Great <laughs> to Xerxes, as basically the guys who have set down the roadmap and rules for success in the 21st century. <laughs> so he's sort of like he has he has one trick, and that is to compare events from uh, classical antiquity to modern business and political leaders. Of course, it makes perfect sense. A little from his CV. Here are uh, some of his books. The Death of Kaiser, The Battle of Salamis, the naval encounter that saved Greece and Western civilization, The Spartacus War, and Masters of Command, Alexander Hannibal Kaiser and the Genius of Leadership. <laughs> his most recent book is Ten Kaisers, Roman Emperors, wait, Augustus the Great. Wait, wait, are you, wait, oh, wait a second. Oh, stop. Are you, you're saying Kaiser? I thought you, it's Caesar. Caesar. No, it's Kaiser. Yeah, but you were, <laughs> hold on a minute. You were saying Caesar okay. all yesterday. Okay. Oh, I you just pulled this okay. out of your ass. I was talking about the salad. <laughs> You're just showing off for the people. <laughs> I used to actually study Latin at Cornell. I do like the idea that, yeah, that you got a lot to learn from Hannibal about your modern office environments. Like, what your uh, small shipping company needs? War elephants. <laughs> Well, uh, famously on Peep Show, uh, Mark writes a book, which I think fits very well into this camp. Yes, Business Secrets of the Pharaohs. <laughs> that seems to be mostly what this guy is yeah. about. And, and he's a, a tenured professor at uh, he's Ivy a, League. Yeah, a full, pro a full <laughs> professor. And uh, we went on his blog, and we, we found he's done like, you know, recent interviews throughout his book. And every single news article or interview he does, any crap that he's quoted in, has a headline like this. What CEOs can learn from Roman emperors? <laughs> and, you, I mean, all right, already that's just like, this, we're all going to die, and this is the worst way you can spend your time alive. But maybe I could think, maybe that could be erudite in some way. Like, that's theoretically possible, mm -hmm. right? I you guess. know a lot. Uh, here's the kind of crap he says. Uh, here's an interview we did with Wharton. Uh, they asked, what is it about these leaders that still resonates today? Strauss. For one thing, they are founders. Mark Zuckerberg is really fascinated with Augustus because Augustus was a founder of something great, an empire that lasted for centuries. <laughs> they both did a thing, is the lesson. I, I just, I, I, I hope that at least one company has hired him as a consultant or something. Absolutely. And they're sitting around the table like, all right, what are we going to do to, you know, boost profits in the third quarter? And he just goes, may I suggest a hoplite failing? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. I searched his name on Twitter and I found some um, uh, rare Barry Strauss memes. <laughs> uh, here's one. It's, 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 it's boys, let's get those rare berries. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the shit, it's like Facebook inspirational quote shit. That's like a stock photo of a statue of a man on a horse with some text overlaid. And here's the quote. It's, uh, Hannibal was both manager and leader, applying <laughs> cunning ingenuity and fortitude, 
and master of strategic surprise, Barry Stroud from Masters of Command. <laughs> He did a thing. He did a thing. I think he's trying to pivot to be like a Tony Robbins style figure, you know, and do like big, like high production talks to like, I don't know. I, uh, think, I think so. Gerber. It's just so crushingly boring. I don't know. I mean, he's got a point. I mean, Hannibal really did disrupt the hell out of the Italian peninsula for like five years. <laughs> Uh, another one is, uh, uh, why these 10 Kaisers explain Rome in the U.S.? My podcast interview with The Octavian Report. <laughs> if I hear a podcast with the name Octavian Report and their, their, their image is a, a, a Roman statue, 50% chance it's just a Nazi podcast. <laughs> I like to think this guy is accidentally going on Nazi podcasts yeah. called like Fist of Thermopylae. He's really interested in Western civilization. That's the thing is that apparently we scour this guy, but he doesn't really do any of that Victor Davis Hanson winking towards the alt right of like, oh, you know, we got to protect Western values. He just really likes all the swords. He just <laughs> likes swords. He has nothing to say about these books. Imagine like reading his book about, you know, uh, uh, the Battle of Salamis, and it's just going to be, yeah, they had arrows. It was cool. They had swords. It was a pretty great fight. Uh, he's also uh, he's also a fan of uh, a certain TV show, a TV program. Yeah, I was just getting to that. If uh, uh, the only thing that seems interesting about this guy's life. And he, the only novelty about him is he really loves Game of Thrones. Yeah. Who does it? And Everybody if, loves Gambo, come on. If you uh, go through his Twitter feed, that's like the only like, you know, non-military quirk that he has, non-classic thing. That's how he unwinds. Uh, here's, some, here's some recent posts by him. Was it just me, or did Sunday's Game of Thrones episode not have the feel of a classic WW2 movie? I was waiting for an entrance by Gregory Peck, David Niven, or Peter Lawford as Lord Lovat with his bagpipes. Here's another one. Before Dothraki or Wildlings, there were barbarians rising against Rome. <laughs> so, I, uh... It's I'm, almost I'm, like they were inspired by them in the movie. <laughs> That's what they're fucking referencing. Uh, another, another one. In times like these, it's hard not to write satire. Juvenal or Tyrion Lannister? <laughs> uh, Tyrion Lannister does not write any satire. He does not write anything, to my knowledge. He's not an author. Uh, it was gratifying to hear from uh, people who have taken his classes that... It, it is an easy A because, like, for your final paper, we could write them for you right now. So uh, here we go. Uh, a modern Cincinnatus, the Elon Musk story. <laughs> Just take one thing from the past and combine it with one thing from the present. Boom, done. Is that what the final papers are like? Is that what he's looking for? Like you, you, you do a quiz at the end, and it's it'll match the uh, fucking Game of Thrones character with the emperor <laughs> that they most represent. No, we were joking downstairs that uh, for someone's final project, they, uh, they, they map out all of the 2020 Democratic uh, uh, contenders with their corresponding, either figure in antiquity or Game of Thrones character. And then he sees it and like a single tear goes down and she's like, God, it's brilliant. <laughs> and, it's, then, and then he kills you and takes credit for your work. Like he's like, it's, Salieri to your young Mozart. It's too good, it's, it's too good. Eric Swalwell is Flavian. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just weeping going like, my God, he's connected. Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings to the Battle of Teutonburg Forest. <laughs> there it is. There you have it, Professor Corrigan. <laughs> yeah, you guys all need to take a class. Definitely. ASAP. I want to take his class. Because I do want to know which Roman emperor I am. And presumably <laughs> there's a test that he gives everyone at the beginning. It's a buzz and it's like, place, yeah. Uh, you are such a Domitian. He's, he's pitching Roman emperors as astrology for men. 